Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Profit Minds podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Stephen Kirch, creator of the Profit Minds Growth System, a unique blend of profit growth, productivity acceleration, and building robust business process for scale. In every episode, I interview entrepreneurs and small business owners from around the world with a unique story to tell. You can find the show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple and Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and more. Well, hello, everyone. Today, my guest is Jan Barlow, founder of Better Job Fit, a purpose-driven nonprofit organization that empowers individuals and businesses to align their strengths and values for meaningful growth. And today we're going to talk about creating a resourceful business through collaboration. Welcome, Jan. Hey, hi, Stephen. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, I start my podcast every time with the same question, right? Just tell us your story. How, how did you get to be running this amazing organization, Better Job Fit? Wow. It's, it's been a journey. Thank you for asking, Stephen. I started Better Job Fit. Um, I was working for a global pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical company. I actually created my own job back then. I had the unique uh, differentiator. I could sell a half a million dollar laser. I could train the doctors on how to use it and perform surgery and then actually teach them how to make money at it. So um, I was living the dream and loving it, uh, was hired by our biggest competitor. They were merging with two other companies at the same time. And so they needed somebody who could just, you know, sell it, get them up and running. It's like a startup business, right? So you're yeah. selling, a, selling a doctor a laser and they're literally starting a, a different segment of business. So it was uh, in laser vision correction. So I could get them up and running within 120 days. And so they needed that, that momentum to keep on selling during this merger and acquisition. So everything was great until three months uh, when I got a new manager and uh, she changed my whole job and my duties that were not aligned to my strengths. <laughs> and pretty much my hair started to fall out. My palms started to peel. I just thought I had to try harder. I thought something must be wrong with me. And after seven, eight months, nine months, I was like, okay, something's not right. Like I, you know, I tried to get HR, you know, some feedback, some help, but during a merger and acquisition, I don't know if you've ever uh, experienced that there's people are just trying to survive and, and keep their own job. Right. So there's no help to be had. Um, and needless to say, uh, it didn't end well. Things went south real quick. Um, and unfortunately, I lost my health and my home, car, marriage, I mean, through that whole ordeal. Wow. And um, sitting there and saying, now what? Like, what? where do you go from that, right? Um, but I pretty much said, I want to make sure that nobody if I can help it, nobody goes through what I went through. And that's really why I started Better Job Fit. Yeah. So so talk a little bit about what you do and how and how you help people um, get that job that's a better fit for them. Well, you know, we started with veterans serving veterans and foster care alumni. So we became, you know, I had a lot of friends that had either either started a veteran or foster care alumni nonprofit organization or they were CEOs. And so they needed help with getting their stakeholders jobs. And so I took the same job matching science that I used with the doctors and getting, you know, hiring people to work in their LASIK practice because that was retail versus pathology. That was a big deal. That's really how I made my name in that industry was doctors were used to a, a model that was insurance based. And then they were starting a new business, a new practice, right? Um, that was all pretty much out of pocket. That was elective surgery. People aren't sick. They just want to get rid of their glasses and contacts. So, you know, just because you had a patient counselor that was great at cataract surgery, you know, with the patients, it's not the same type of patient. 
So I really had to get um, real knowledgeable and, and become an expert in true job matching. And so I just took that skill and uh, those tools and used it for good and helped, uh, especially transitioning service members. You know, what do you do with a gunny sergeant? Right now, what is only available is they take a job uh, description from the military and they compare it to a job description of a private sector uh, job. Well, that's not the person. You're comparing job descriptions. You're not comparing the person to the job right? Or matching the, the person to the job. So we have been able to, this is since 2009, we provided the job matching service that the companies can say, hey, Jan, we're looking for A, B, and C uh, positions. And so we're able to literally create a custom job match pattern for any position in a company and then match them to a veteran or foster care alumni. So that's really how we started. And in 2018, uh, we got a call from the career networking groups in and around the country and said, hey, we hear what you're doing, the workshops and the job matching for veterans in foster care. Can you do it for regular people? So <laughs> that's kind of how we started uh, the program. And, and that in turn turned into our social impact program. Uh, and right now, as of um, June, we have four different brands uh, that we have under the Better Job Fit umbrella and four different types of services that we provide to people from all walks of life. Yeah, so so your job fit thing, I, I presume that it takes a look at the personality of the person as well as some of the skills that they have and sort of tries to understand the, the, the totality of the person. How, how do you go about, I mean, you said you use science here, and of course I'm a scientist, so I'm, right. I'm really interested in, yeah. the, in, the, in the science of, you know, how do you figure out somebody that's been, you know, in the military and all they've done is, is sort of followed orders right? Or, or maybe they have some other kind of specific skill that, you know, they've learned how to take it a gun apart and put it back together. I mean, I'm, I'm simplifying, obviously. Yeah. But, but how do you transfer those skills to, uh, uh, you know, whatever kind of job they might be interested in or what, or, or what the company is looking for in terms of, of a, a person to hire? Well, what's great, Stephen, is that over 30 years ago, Harvard Business Review said that job matching has nothing to do with your age, race, socioeconomic condition, what school you went to, has nothing to do with what job you've done. It has to do with cognitive behavior and occupational interest. So we have a system that has been operating outside of science. So we've been doing the uh, what does Einstein say that the, <laughs> the um, you know, craziness, like, like, yeah, yeah it's, it's doing that, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting yeah. a different result. That's, yeah, that's exactly right. And so we're taking, and as you know, you know, when it comes to human beings, we, we can't be objective about ourselves. So why do we still continue to use a resume and an interview <laughs> to determine job match and success? Right. So we've been taking uh, AI that's been around for 30 plus years and we're using it for the greater good for the person who's being affected the most. Um, I started out to talk to schools, chancellors, presidents of universities, um, and they didn't get it either. Right. They're like, oh, well, everything's fine. Well, right. Until now we're losing schools right and left because they can't retain students. Right. And back in 2018, we did a project that, uh, 65% of alumni college graduates were surveyed and they said they were not in a job related to their degree. Um, and unfortunately that's really where we are right now. Uh, 2016, the cover of consumer report, my college degree bankrupted me. 2015 uh, Harvard Business Review. It's time to blow up HR and start with something new. So these two industries have been broken for a very long time, right? Um, and so we've just been quiet in the back, just doing our work and helping individuals one by one to really 
get that job match and go beyond what they think is possible uh, for them. So that's really the biggest um, victory that we are able to do. We open up, I mean, this is a fact, Stephen, 45% of people surveyed said that they have no idea how to translate their skill sets to another industry or position. We're able to well, do I, that yeah. with one. <laughs> we're able to do that with, with one one click of a, a mouse uh, and say, "Hey, guess what? You're a ninety five percent match to a director. You're a eighty five percent match to, let's say, a recruiter. Um, let's say. I mean, that's the thing. You you can't you can't imagine what you're a match to because of the limiting beliefs that you that we all have about ourselves and what we think is possible, not only for us, but for others. Right. Yeah. That's, that, it's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, the, the, the whole psychology thing of, you know, this is what I have done and I can only imagine, you know, sort of a little bit of different kinds of things that I might be able to do based on those skills that I've discussed, that I, that I've developed. Right. Rather than thinking about me as a, well, how do I learn and and how do I how, you know, how do I communicate mm -hmm. and how, how, do, how do I behave in, a, in an organization as a as a as a leader or as a follower or as a, you know, as a, 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 a we'll say foot soldier. But but, you know, somebody who's, you know, part of the team, right, as a team member um, and, and those well, behaviors. Sales. So like. So you can, like I have a, a gentleman, he's in the C-suite and works for Ernst & Young. He's a partner. He's been in that accounting firm for 30 years. Well, he's now planning his strategy to move on to his next. Um, he's a 90% match to a CEO for a nonprofit client of mine. He's a 90% match to sales and technology. So that's the beauty is he you know you can take what he's done before in his current position and align that to that job we we tend to match people by their job title or industry and that's not correct <laughs> that's yeah, so, just so so what are, so what are those key things that that then you look for you said behavioral I'm trying to remember. So what. it's cognitive, right? Cognitive yeah. behavior and occupational think? interests, right? Okay. Behavior, right? So like, you know, on the scale of one to 10, if, uh, you know, a generic match pattern for a salesperson in that behavior profile is somebody that's going to be five to 10 on sociability, right? But that's a generic pattern. You could have uh, in a company that in their position, maybe that high performer in that company of sales, of technology, maybe they're a four on sociability. So this is where we get into the true custom job match profiling because a sales position in one company is not the same as a sales position in another. Just like for me, when I went from one global pharmaceutical company to another, they wanted me, you know, the manager that hired me, she said, Jan, you're you're independent you are the type that we need here's our goal go out and sell get those lasers up and running and keep on going well that's because that's what the company needed but when that new manager came in she changed my whole job and wanted me to do admin work and computer work like we don't make money <laughs> you yeah. the company our department doesn't make money with me sitting behind a computer, figuring out Excel spreadsheets, right? So that's where you really have to understand what does success in that job look like, right? And what are your high performers that you already have in that position? What are the quantitative and qualitative aspects of success in the job, right? So it's way beyond, way beyond, uh, you know, traditional way that we're looking at job matching. So, so, so how, how does this process start? You, you start with a company who has now a need and they come to you and say, we're looking for 
uh, this kind of position and not and not with a uh, a job description like they would put out on on, on Indeed, but they would they come to you and th and then you you profile the successful people mm -hmm. in that in yep. that position. Yep, uh, and, and there's to understand what you're looking for. Yep. So you have quantitative and qualitative success factors. So let's say if it's sales person, well, you're going to need to make sure that you write out, okay, what, when you look at, if you got 10 salespeople, what, how do you identify your top salespeople, you know, top, middle and lower tier? Well, like what, what do they have to do? Meet 80% of their goal, you know, reach a certain, so you got your metrics, quantitative metrics. And then we can literally take your top performers and clone them and create a custom job match profile. So when you go to hire more people, you're able to now run that, that job match pattern against your finalists. Let's say you got 10 finalists. You can run that job match pattern against everybody to see where they fall in that against that job match pattern and higher from there. Okay. So, so now, so, so now you've created a, a job match, uh, a, a pattern for the position you want to fill. And then you, you do the same thing with the, the pool of people that you're trying to put into those positions. Right. How, so how, let, let's, let's say like we're working with a veteran nonprofit organization, right? Companies, and what we really like is companies are already donating to that organization. They already have existing partners. And what what's really interesting is nonprofits are the first ones to say, oh, we, we don't have any resources, right? And, you know, we depend on people to donate money, right? That's it. Well, what are you giving back to the people that donate, right? We've created a system that is holistic. So those companies that are already writing you a check to donate, well, they can pretty much, we can create a custom job match pattern for any position that they have in their company. And that pretty much, that check that they write goes to see if any of the people like the veterans or your stakeholders match those jobs that they already have. So they become a recruiting source so that nonprofit becomes a recruiting source or a talent pool source for that company that they've been partners for years with, right? So now it's a holistical, that's why, you know, resourceful business uh, through collaboration. Now you have a very holistic relationship. And once that person or people are uh, placed in that company, part of that recruiting fee that they pay, that they would pay anyway, Part of that goes back to buying more job matching assessments for the next stakeholders that are coming up for jobs. So mm. it's it truly is holistic um, and sustainable model. Yeah. So so this real sim, uh, symbiosis between the the corporation that's that's donating to uh, a, a nonprofit that winds up being a resource pool for feeding feeding them feeding Absolutely. them employees. It's a talent pool source, right? I mean, yeah, they become yeah. a talent pool source for not only, it, again, it, it just creates that force multiplier for good. That's, that's, that's brilliant. So um, what's the, what's the right way for a company that would be interested in, you know, potentially leveraging some of their partnerships or their collaborations, their partnerships that they already exist. What's the, what's the best way for them to, to go down that path? So with job matching. Yeah. So what we love to do is again, we, because this is something that a lot of people don't know about and they've never thought about. Right. Right. So we like to, to go to the nonprofit. We send out an email and invite, all their partners, corporate partners, we bring them in, we tell them about the program, and then we just go and customize it for each company that wants to participate. Um, that's with the job matching. And what we had in um, June that we launched our social impact program, we brought 
nonprofits, for profits, financial institutions, academia, venture capital, and community foundation organizations all under one roof. We brought them in for four hours um, for this social impact workshop and literally broke them up into individual groups representing each industry, so to speak, or each segment. And we did a quick little um, SWOT analysis. It was like real quick. And literally we had each group say, okay, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And they started to talk and share with one another. And within 45 minutes, we had a uh, thriving financial uh, financial institution was speaking to a church that had a community project that they were trying to fund and literally funded a $5 million project. So being able to create these workshops around the country bringing those entities together that would normally not be, in, uh, you know, in one room together, that we're able to facilitate resources, right? It's not about a lack of resources. It's about a lack of, of resourcefulness. And so what we're doing with our social impact program is creating those or facilitating those opportunities for resourcefulness. That's great. So, so you have these kind of workshops, all, or is, was that was that the first time you'd done that, or have you done that? That was you what that? we 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 did that, that our first one in June. Yeah, that was our yeah. pilot program in uh, excuse me Harris County, which is the in Houston outside of Houston. It's the second largest county in the U.S. And they had just gone through major uh, tornado. Um, weather related damage the those two months prior. So they were hurting. That community was hurting. So the timing that we came in was really, really um, special. And so that I, I got to tell you that I really was glad that that was our launch because that showed how significant and how open everybody was to, to be part of something bigger and nobody really had ever experienced anything like that before. So are you planning to do other, the other, others of those or in different places in the, in the country, we, do you have any scheduled? Yes. None scheduled right now. We would like to get more municipalities involved and we're open to really participate or really collaborate with municipalities and local government. So right now we're, we've put out an APB, if you will, to uh, anybody that's in the municipality or county or state even. We are welcome, you know, we'd be open to talk about uh, bringing a workshop to their county or communities. And and how how is there a size that you're looking for? You said Houston, that's a huge place, right? Um, well, but, that's why uh, we chose that area to, if, yeah. if you're going to pick, you know, the second largest county in the, in the U S that's why we use that as our beta project. So, so now we, I mean, we can go anywhere. We just wanted to do it in a bigger area so we could work the bugs out and see what that would attract, but yeah. we can adjust it anywhere. Steve, is, really. is, is there a list of the kinds of organizations? I mean, you, you listed a whole wide variety of organizations that were involved in this. Is there a certain sort of like a minimum number or a minimum type or, or any of that no. kind of thing? You're just, you're just looking for no. people who are interested in collaboration and, and trying to solve community problems. Yeah. Um, who wants in, to be involved. In okay. okay. That's exactly right. Because you, I look at it this way. It's, it's more important to find the people who are interested and have that unique mindset. So exactly what your, your program is about, Stephen, it's a very different mindset. And so if you fall in the municipality, a, a for-profit or a non-profit, uh, and, and this workshop interests you, and you see the benefits of it. We want you to show up because you're going to get something out of it, no matter how big or small you are. Is this like a day long kind of workshop? No, we, we actually did it for four hours. We had a two hour workshop in the morning and then we took two hours for lunch to where everybody got to introduce themselves. They got to um, tell their story. You know, what's their, their organization? What are their needs? And I got to be honest, that was so welcomed to meet people that they that were in their community that they had never met 
people were exchanging numbers, they were scheduling meetings, they wanted to take that conversation to talk about potential project and collaborating afterwards. So it's about relationshiping. So we took two hours to really uh, see what the you know professional opportunities were, the funding, et cetera, and get people to talk about, okay, these are our needs, here are our strengths, and do a little matchmaking. And then um, also we taught them how, how to really collaborate because a lot of people don't understand how to do that. Um, we shared what we do with our job matching and how we work with companies and municipalities. So that whole concept was more educational for them to get them thinking outside the box. And that second half was more about relationshiping. Got it. And and uh, so if somebody wanted to to get in touch with you or or to set up one of these things, thinking about that kind of thing, what's what's the best way for them to reach out? I, I want them to email me at j barlow b a r l o w at betterjobfit.org. That you can message me on LinkedIn, Jan Barlow. Okay, great. I would love it. And that, and that concludes our show. Thanks so much to my guest, Jan Barlow, the founder of Better Job Fit. And I hope you learned something about building a resourceful business through collaboration. I know I did. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to the Profit Minds podcast. This is your host, Dr. Stephen Kirch. Please visit www.profitminds.net for other episodes or to contact me. Thank you for your positive feedback, comments, questions, and for sharing this show with others. Thanks for listening. Have a grateful day.